Hi, this is Denise of Paper Crafty, and welcome to my Crafty Corner. Today I'm really excited to be taking part in Rachel Bella Craft's newest collaboration, Hardy Creations. They are featuring guest designers Edith at Scrapbooking with Me Crafts and her daughter, Melina Pylant. My prompt for this collaboration is light, and I chose this word because it really speaks to me. Uh, and it's funny because the other day I noticed uh, after I had chosen this prompt <laughs> that I still have this uh, little sticky note uh, up in my kitchen, kind of on my cabinets. And I had put these around the house, you know, and this is the only one that, that has survived. It's been several years ago already that I, I had this as my word of the year. But I really love this. And I, it's, um, it says, what am I hoping to reveal by letting light in. So uh, when I think of light, I think of windows, I think of doors, I think of, uh, you know, different uh, things that you know, allow the light to enter uh, a space. So I decided to create some ephemera that uh, plays on that idea of light and letting light in uh, to our lives. So I took this door from one of uh, Rachel and Bella's uh, ephemera pages and I cropped this image out and I uh, enlarged it. So what I ended up with was a page like this and I'm only going to use one side. I just made a duplicate page uh, just in case. Um, but I have this door on this side <clears throat> and I flipped it, uh, mirror imaged it on the back so that it uh, lines up perfectly on the other side as well. So I want to cut this out and I'm going to use it in my journal. Uh, so in case you don't know how to uh, do this on uh, your phone, uh, I'm going to use my iPad because it's a larger screen, um, but and, and also because I am videotaping <laughs> right now with my phone. Uh, but you know, you can do this with whatever device you have. It's really simple. Uh, I, you can see this is the page of ephemera, the original page of ephemera. Uh, it came as a JPEG. So I am going to edit it and I'm just going to crop it. So I just take that and I don't worry too much about what size I'm making it and it's done. Okay, and then I can print this. My, I have a, an Epson EcoTank, so it does work better for me. Uh, if I do this uh, using my uh, Epson uh, app, and let's see, I'm just using some thick paper, highest setting. I want it from the regular. Okay. And the key thing here is that I am going to be printing it two up. Two per you can see that I have two, two, uh, prints on one page. Okay, so I'm going to hit yes, and then it's going to start printing. Okay, when I'm done with that, I'm going to go back to my photo. I'm going to duplicate it. Okay, so now I have two of them, and I'm going to edit this so that I just flip it, do a mirror image of it horizontally. And for some reason, for the way I was printing it, I also had to turn this one upside down. So you might have to experiment a little bit to see what works uh, with your printer. And then I just did, I just printed it the same way. I turned the page over and I printed it in. Okay. So, you know, you, you might have to manipulate it a little bit differently with your uh, setup and, and how your, uh, you know, printer and your computer is configured but that's generally the process.
helpful. So like I said, this is what I ended up with and I'm just gonna fussy cut this out. So you see this is the front side, this is the back side. It's a little, a little tiny bit off, but it's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and ink this up a little bit just to use a little bit of uh, some pumice stone distress ink. That, that'll get rid of any of the imperfections, right? a new thing that I just got too. Just got these glue pads on Amazon. So I think I'm going to try putting this underneath my little ink pad there to hold it in place so it doesn't, you know, go all over the place while I'm trying to ink. I can leave the link for these uh, down below if you're interested. Uh, and getting some of these, but they work fabulous. I was like so impressed with this. Well, oh, look at that. That's not going anywhere. Ha ha. Yeah, baby. Okay. Sweet. And the uh, thing goes on the left. All right. That's working fabulously. I love that. Wow. Okay. Okay. I love this little gingham pattern on the interior, but my idea behind this is that I want to let the light in. So I'm going to take these kind of little curtain things out and I'm going to put something else or nothing <laughs> in there. Okay. So let's Theoretically, these should just pop right out. Sweet. I want to make this door open, so I'm going to cut along here. Okay. And the irony of this is that we have a uh, door downstairs that's broken, will not open, and it is so secure uh, and a European design that we can't e we can't even get it open to repair it. <laughs> so yeah, maybe that's why I'm fixated on doors right now. Boy, it is really a pain in the neck not having a door when you need one. Okay, that came up a little bit. That's okay, I'll just glue that back down. But you can see I'm going to just score that like that, and that will open up like that. So this fold's going to act like a hinge, and will get a lot of wear. So I want to use some of this uh, Scotch Matte Magic Tape uh, just to reinforce that uh, fold area. And I think I'm just going to reinforce this back side, not the front side at all. And I'm just going to go through and uh, ink it up a little bit where I uh, made the cuts. Uh, I, I gotta say, I'm really loving this glue pad. And I think this uh, the name of the glue pad is a little bit of um, a little misleading because uh, it's not really glue. It's kind of like a plasticky, sticky thing. I think it's meant for like holding uh, cell phones onto dashboards of cars type thing. This says it can hold up to five pounds, it removes easily, it won't leave a residue behind or any damage. It's washable and re-grippable over a thousand times. Designed to grip where nothing else can. This thing is actually really awesome. I really, really am loving these. these. So anyway, you know, this isn't an infomercial, but I just thought that you guys might <laughs> find these useful. Okay, so my thought is 
that I would take uh, this little door and then I would use it on one of the pages. And I was thinking of this one. I really love uh, this background, especially with uh, the bookshelves in this cozy little nook here. I really like the idea of uh, light having the ability to reveal what is hidden. Uh, so I like these apertures in the doorway and being able to open it and reveal what's beyond. So it's kind of symbolic in that way of light, letting light through. Uh, I love the way this looks on here, but I realize there's these wards. They're very, very faint, um, but they do show up somewhat. So I think I'm, I need to find a way to kind of uh, you know, make those those words uh, not readable. Right, so I'm thinking some... maybe a little bit of some distressed oxide that might have uh, more uh, of an opaque effect. All right, and I just want to cover up this section of books and look weird not having that covered up on this page okay I like it. and then I'm just going to um, glue around here on all of those three surfaces so I can glue this down so this uh, this could be actually be used on a cover of a journal and if I did have it on the cover I wouldn't hesitate to put like a hitching post right here as a matter of fact if you put the hitching post there you could then use that as a uh, tie for your ribbon to as a closure for the journal that would be really really cute but for this one I'm just going to be using it in the interior of the journal so as just a page in the signature so I'm really happy with that and it looks like the glue worked just fine on that uh, tape underneath so I'm really excited about that. All right so that's uh, one project uh, that I've done uh, with light as a theme uh, where you know you have apertures where the light can enter a a space and reveal what is inside so very cool all right so the next project that i have <laughs> i got from this ephemera page from edith's kit <laughs> and i was really attracted to this armoire so i did the same type of thing i i uh, cropped this out i enlarged it and i printed it twice on a piece of paper i actually made it into a uh cut file for my uh, silhouette. I had cut it by hand the first time around, but I really wanted to cut around all the edges and to cut out these two uh, pieces here and then have this layered on top of it. So uh, I, you know, after doing it once by hand, I as a prototype, I went ahead and, and created the cut file so that I could do it more quickly the next time around. Uh, after I had enlarged this and cut this out, Edith came out then with a freebie. And in the freebie, she had a larger version of this uh, armoire. And it's exactly the same size as what I have here. You can run over and grab your freebie and just, you know, fussy cut this uh, ar uh, this armoire out uh, from here. You don't have to enlarge it from this, uh, this image here. So that would probably be the easier way to go about this. I did print this on some thicker, I think it's like 60 pound uh, double-sided photo paper. So I got a nice image and it was a little bit thicker. Uh, I'm sticking with this one because I had already, you know, done the work for it. <laughs> so <laughs> so we'll, we'll just go with that. Um, and what I was thinking is, is that um, I really want, you know, I really like the idea, again, of light passing through something. And in this instance, these, you know, apertures right here and revealing what's 
below. So the idea behind this is to put something uh, translucent uh, here behind this. Uh, and there's lots of different options, you know, that you can uh, go with. You could go with uh, just some packaging, some clear packaging. Uh, you could go with, you know, something like this. This is, you know, transparency, you know, that I purchased at Michael's. So something like that would be uh, certainly an option as well. Could even do something like you know, some uh, vellum would be really pretty, just very subtle behind there. And you can still, you it's still translucent. You can see what's behind the, the, uh, the holes there. Uh, you could go with the metallic cardstock. I think I just got this at Michael's. And of course this isn't translucent, but it does reflect the light. So, you know, you get that kind of cool effect inside of that. Or you could use like a lace behind it. And I think this is what I'm gonna go with right here is the lace. I, I really love this very feminine look that I'm getting with that. And I've printed out, printed this out twice. You can see this one's a mirror image of that one because it's gonna just go right on the back like that. And then I also was able to cut out uh, just from some cardstock uh, to give it a little bit of thickness. That just like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and ink those up. And okay, I'll be so right. I inked up all my little bits. And now I just want to glue this. Uh, this piece of lace inside of here. All right, so that looks super cute just like this. And now you could just glue this down into the page like that if you'd like. Um, I'm going to make a hidden paper clip out of this. So that's why I've got all these uh, other layers here. So let's see, make sure I'm getting it the right direction. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna glue, I'm just gonna use some glue stick on this. And then I'm just gluing the uh, printed mirror image onto the back. And this is absolutely not necessary. If you just want to leave uh, it kind of naked on the back, that's fine. That's a personal choice. But, you know, I just chose to uh, finish this off this way. So to keep this uh, flat as I am drawing it, uh, I'm using something flat and heavy uh, on top of it. And I'm, I happen to have my uh, Big Shot die cutting machine uh, close by, so I used one of the plates from that, but you can use a book. <laughs> and while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm going to go ahead and uh, work on this next portion. And again, I'm just gluing the three layers of uh, this top portion of the armoire together. So the front, the uh, cardstock in the middle to give it uh, some strength and stability, and then the uh, mirror image back portion. Okay. So I'm just gonna fold over a bit of paper. I'm using this polka dotted paper as the base for the hidden paper clip. this long. Okay. 
then I'm just going to take a little bit of uh, some of this craft tape. And this isn't necessary, but I like to do this just to have the seam of this reinforced a little bit. Uh, just so it doesn't you know, tear or anything. Okay. All right, so now I'm just gonna take a couple of some paper clips. Let's see, I'm gonna just go ahead and mark where I want them. Just using my Sharpie because I've got one out here and that'll work on there. This I'm just making the uh, the base for the hidden paper clip. And again, using a little bit of art glitter glue. Paper clip, make sure everything's nice and glued in. Furnishing all that down. Okay. So that'll fit on there just like that. That should look pretty cool, huh? Okay. okay, so these are all dry now, and I just, I love the way this turned out. You can just, you know, it's got that translucent background, it's nice and flat. Mm. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and finish off making this paper clip. You can see the two paper clips are right there. So really just very simply, I'm going to put this on there. So that's why I wanted the backing on it because you can see that little piece. It's it's not much, I know, but it just it would bother me. <laughs> okay. So make sure I am gluing the right side because wouldn't that be a bummer if I didn't glue the right side. Okay, so this is the correct side for this one. And then this is going to be the back. All right. All right, so this is going to go like this. I'm just going to use some nice sturdy glue and I'm just going to go across here right there like that okay <clears throat> I want to make sure that I've 
got this glued in the right spot. So the two paper clips are, let's see, there and there. ahead and trim this edge as well. Okay, so these, these paper clips go down to right here, so I can't make that any um, shorter on there now you could totally take just this piece right here and use that in your mm. journal that would be really cool all right so i'm going to just open these up a slight bit so i can get it on and off a page easily okay i'm just going to glue that on there like that There we go. That's looking pretty good. So now I'm just gluing a piece of uh, vintage tatting along that pink strip on the back of the hidden paper clip. And I'm really doing it just to camouflage that pink strip and to add a little bit of decoration. Okay, so this goes on there like that. All right. That looks good on that side. And then I just glued the mirror image flower cluster to the back of the hidden paper clip. And that's just so, you know, you couldn't uh, see the white from the other side and both sides look pretty. <laughs> uh, okay, so this, I love this. I think this turned out super cute. I might even like this side better. But it looks cute off the page. And it looks great on the page. Uh, I really love it on this uh, striped paper that looks so much to me like wallpaper and you can see I cut it a little shorter so that the uh, armoire wouldn't be kind of floating in uh, space up high on the page. <laughs> I think it looks cute layered up with some of these taller pages. And that would open up and you've got another page right there. Oh, I love that. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, again, uh, with the light prompt that has translucent uh, background that you can, you know, get a hint of what's behind there, what's revealed, because light can pass through. Super cute. Okay, so another aspect of light uh, is expressed through photography, right? So all colors and everything that we see uh, is light that is reflected back into our eye. Uh, and then our brain processes that and that gives us our vision. And the camera is a symbol for the eye. The eye is the lens through which we view the world. It is the window to our soul. It's the eye of the creator. I, I really was inspired by these uh ephemera pieces from Rachel's kit and I really loved uh, this page right here particularly this camera right here just really uh, I thought was extremely beautiful okay so I'm going to interpret this a little differently and I have not done this uh, process before so we're gonna be kind of experimenting and playing a little bit together 
And I thought that what I would do would be really fun is to take a little bit like actual light and have it come through this flash. Okay. To get this die cut uh, camera that I'm using on top of the page, I just printed that digital page twice. Uh, the second time I printed it on some thicker cardstock and then I fussy cut it out and I used an eighth inch uh, hole punch right in the center of the flash where I want the light to come out. Okay so uh, I found these, uh, these light stickers and they're super thin and tiny uh, online and I thought this would be a really kind of a fun uh, way to play with the idea of light uh, and just kind of see where that takes us. Uh, and I have some of this conductive uh, copper tape. And I have some small batteries. Let's see, there was another one that I had. Oh, it was this one. So this one should be com compatible as well. Okay, so I'm just going to take a piece of some scrap paper here, and I want to make sure that this um, little battery fits inside of here. So I, you can see I'm folding this piece of paper over the battery and that hinge portion is really important to this process. And what's not important is, is uh, trimming around the battery like I'm doing currently, but I have kind of a tight space so I want to make sure everything fits. Alright, so I'm putting the battery in like this. This bottom part is the negative and this is the positive. All right, so the, the, and I'm going to go ahead and just add a little tape here so that it doesn't go anywhere. I want the little light to be So now I'm just going to run the uh, copper conductive tape uh, for the negative portion of the circuit. So I'm going from the bottom uh, of that little hinge, which is essentially a, a rudimentary switch, right? Uh, I'm just running that tape uh, from that uh, where it says negative up to the top of where I want my little light to be. And on itself just a slight bit and just go to right uh, yeah right here is perfect and I'm just going to burnish this down a little bit And then I'm going to take this, this is the positive, I'm going to run it from here, out to here, all right. Now I don't want this to tear in this crease here. So I've got to make sure that it's got plenty of room so it doesn't tear there. Okay. 
Yeah, I'm gonna double it back on itself. The company that makes these um, little teeny lights that I'm using makes a fabric conductive tape and I'm thinking it might be a lot easier to work with, with than this stuff because this uh, metallic copper tape is really fragile and it breaks uh, fairly easily. Um, so I'm thinking that yeah, the fabric tape might work better for this application. Uh, but I, you know, I uh, didn't plan ahead well enough and I had to order off Amazon. So, uh, and they didn't have the fabric uh, adhesive tape made by this company. So uh, I'm thinking that would might work a little bit better honestly. Okay, so I'm just going up to here again, and I'm going to cut that. So you can see that the two pieces of copper tape are separated by about an eighth of an inch up at the top, where I'm going to be putting the little light. Uh, the most important thing here is that they don't uh, touch. Uh, if they touch, it's going to short out the circuit. So uh, you want them to be close enough that the uh, positive and negative end of the sticker can uh, breach that gap, but not so close that they touch. And then I'm going to take my little sticker. Look at that. How thin and tiny that is. And I've got to make sure I get it the right orientation because this has a positive and a negative. So the positive's on top and the negative's on the bottom. So this is our positive and this is the negative. So we need to do it this direction, just like that. All right, fingers crossed. <gasps> Yay, look at that. Can you see that? Oh, it's working. All right. So, yeah, now I need to create some distance between this paper and this little uh, die cut that I'm going to put on top, just so this isn't down all the time that you can actually, you know, make this into a switch so it goes on and off. Okay. So I'm just going to move this out of the way for the moment. I cut these uh this die cut shape out of some craft foam uh, adhesive back craft foam and i did it two times um the first one i'm just putting because I, I had to do it twice because it wasn't quite thick enough the first time around so i'm just putting this over here and i just want to test it and make sure it's still working yep okay good so i'm just going to burnish that down so now for this next layer, I need to create an opening f like right around here where this circle is uh, and where the hole is over here, but I don't need quite as much uh, uh, of the area cut out. Okay. And I think I might just um, put this extra piece right here so that this uh, battery doesn't move around. Actually, I, before I do that, I should make sure that that doesn't interfere with the light. Nope, that's just fine. There we go. Look at how cute that looks. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm going to burnish this down a little bit. And I'm just using some double-sided uh, tape to adhere the die cut to the foam. Look at this. Mm, let's zoom in. Taking the photo. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? I love that. 
I just love that. I love the symbolism in this because, you know, honestly, uh, we are all God's children. And, you know, if you have that worldview where, you know, you believe in uh, a higher power of God uh, and <clears throat> and you th you believe that we are all his children, then, you know, we we have to think what would a, uh, a, a parent want for their child? Well, we want our children to shine. Right. And to share their light and share our creative gifts with the world. So, you know, this is just, I think, just very symbolic of that. And I really love this. This could be great on a cover. Um, it does have some dimension, so, you know, it might be really good on a cover, but it might be great, you know, in a, in a, uh, as the first page of a uh, signature as well. So, you know, I just really love this. I was planning on using this in my signature, so uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and just stick with that. Okay, so I really like this on the bottom here. I cut this with my silhouette and I'm thinking uh, I might actually use some of that uh, acetate on there just to give this some stability. Okay. I think I think the easiest way to do this is just going to be to staple this on here because it's, I think it's going to be pretty much impossible to glue it. So this acetate packaging is really easy to cut both with the trimmer and with scissors. So I just cut it down to size to fit uh, this little die cut piece from Rach's uh, ephemera page. And uh, again, stapling that die cut onto the acetate. And then I'm just going to use double sided tape to adhere the whole thing uh, down to the page to make a little tuck spot. Uh, I had used some Fabri-Tac to uh, adhere the lace trim uh, prior to putting down the film strip. And I like it a little bit wonky. It's not completely square, so that's I'm actually happy with that. All right, and then I was thinking this something like this would look really cute in there too. Just kind of tucked in there. So it's funny how projects evolve as you are making them. Um, I had actually intended to make a large uh, ephemera piece like this and I had set aside some items and uh, I resized these. You know like I showed you earlier. Uh, and, you know, this is a great way to just kind of extend uh, your ephemera pieces. You can, you know, make all sorts of different sizes of, of what you want. And my intention in this was to put, I had printed off some of this uh, vellum, printed vellum, and I had intended to, and I still probably will, uh, put like this really beautiful uh, piece of this uh, printed vellum on uh, inside this frame. But I have all this other uh, vellum that I can use as well. I, I'm, I think I'm gonna go ahead and use uh, some of it in, in this one because why not? I've got it out. Uh, I hadn't intended to make this little teeny, uh, photo frame, but we need a little ephemera for this tuck spot, so why not? So I tore this little piece as I was trying to uh, get the, I put some tape on here and I didn't want to put tape, so that happens. It's all right. I'm just going to roll with it and I am going to believe that I'll find a way to kind of mask that and cover it up. So, not the end of the world. Let's see, I really like that section right there.
I could add a little piece of tape there that might look really, really cute. And then I have a word that I think would be perfect on here. Cute, cute, cute. cute. All right. So then I can just put that right in there. Okay, so I'm just going to very simply decorate <clears throat> this little tag. I'm just gonna take a little piece of some cheesecloth and use it as a backing here. Staple that on there. Okay, so I just trimmed that a little bit. And then I'm going to add a little bit of some uh, washi to the back just to cover that. I wonder if this would look good folded over. Okay, so that's a cute little uh, page spread and it lights up when you take a photo. I have been so inspired by this prompt light and these gorgeous kits that I literally have not been able to stop. I have more ephemera that I created, but I think I'm going to have to end the video here uh, because this is getting a little bit on the long side. So I will be coming out with a bonus video uh, for this collaboration, uh, hopefully before the end of of the collaboration in mid-June, uh, but if not, then shortly thereafter. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. If you haven't already, I hope you check out the other collaboration video that we'll post today. That's by Melanie from The Treasured Page, and her prompt for today is joy. Uh, so we can always use more of that, and I'm really excited to see what she has to share with us uh, using that prompt. Uh, and I hope that you also check out all the other uh, amazing creators. Uh, they have just knocked it out of the park and come up with some really fabulous ideas for how to use these kits and uh, incorporate these prompts into your journals. If you like today's video, please give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment letting me know which prompt has most inspired you during this collaboration and why. If you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing to my channel. It really means the world to me. And ring that notification bell so you know when I come out with new videos. Don't forget to watch this video right here because it'll give you more inspiration for creating ephemera for your journals. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Again, this is Denise with Paper Crafty and Craft On.